Okay, so I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, corridors because this is uh, something that, you know, it's like a, a step uh, in uh, trying to get a working project. Uh, uh, so walkways and corridors are essential. So in the book Dickie Ching, once again, we have this part that speaks about human dimension. So it's a good reference to give us an idea of uh, some of the body sizes and heights that we can start to 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 work with if we're not yet familiar with some of these uh desk height table heights uh leg clearances but what i'm trying to look at right now is probably uh, corridors and passageways so we see that uh, human standing sideways is three feet ten and 1.1 foot seven and so for larger spaces we see that you can even go to two and 2.25 meters wide or seven feet six inches so this allows us to sort of plan and you know this is probably why some of the corridors standard width is four feet wide right or 1.2 meters wide and so when you understand that it becomes a lot easier to start planning uh, with some of these dimensions and you know uh means of egress now uh it can be it can can start to make a bit of sense on how to uh uh plan these things okay so the other thing too is that in blender you have the grease pencil so i'm going to try to demonstrate that a little bit so i have uh, here some uh, people that i modeled here uh nothing special they're just uh, uh i just took uh, these models right here so it's, it's it's this person that I just remodeled here that I have here. So what I like to do is I like to create a, like a, a plane uh, like this and say, okay, I want you to be 1.2, 1.2 meters because this is the width of my corridor, 1.2 meters like this. Okay. And so let me hide this uh, slab, hide that. So now... Uh, Obviously, this is where the grease pencil comes into place because this is the width that I'm working with, right? So the width here requires you to be at least three feet ten. I'm I'm four feet wide or one point one point one meters, so I'm one point two, so I'm good right there. So normally the stairs, you know, when you're working with stairs uh, like this, like usually when I have my my base element stairs to st to get started with. Uh, what I do is that okay, I pull out the grease pencil like this. Where's the grease pencil? And uh, you, you have some layer options here grease pencil layers, okay, uh, new layer. And so I can start to draw. And usually, if the stairs just freestanding, you know that you have uh, you know a few options here. So uh, you, you know, you have the you have this direction. Let me toggle the uh, start display so. Uh, and uh, probably draw on surface or uh, on the cursor 3d cursor reset that to zero zero and zero and then I can draw on the cursor okay so and here I can always change the color of my stroke this is something that's cool I can always do many iterations and, and preview my path right so so I press D and I can draw so uh, of course a stair like this only gives you two possibilities when you are this landing okay and so uh, surface so of course you're gonna do this and then you're gonna land here and so if you there's nothing around there's you know uh, these are the, the possibilities so naturally your walkways have to be something like this in this direction let me drop another line so uh, like this so let's assume that you had one wall that was sealed right here you know so there's a big wall here and so you can't just go there so naturally this is closed these are the only areas that you have in terms of access right so you come up and then you you know you have to turn here or you either go forward so this is how you begin to do some analysis of the spaces that you have in and the grease pencil in blender is excellent for this kind of stuff so what i'm going to do is that once i've studied a little bit what my path would look like i'm going to come here and start drawing basically on the first floor uh make sure my snaps are on basically on the first floor like this uh 
you know you'd have the ability to walk around the stairs sort of like this so you can go down like this and you can walk next to it and then if you have some kind of furnitures and and whatnot around here you know so this makes the walk path very efficient rather than let's say walk around the furniture uh, you know this makes the walk path much lengthy and that imposes corridors in some settings that you don't probably need which means extra walls which means uh, money in terms of like, you know expenses um, so the grease pencil allows me to do a lot of this quick layout analysis that I can quickly draw in real time and I can control them turn off uh, turn them on at any time so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select this plane here that represent my walk path and you know just snap it here and then come here and then extrude this like this and then select that and then extrude that right here and so so this represents my walk part at least what i've mapped for the base for the base uh for the base floor right and so uh in this in this example now let's say okay uh um uh, you know let me hide these stairs let's say in this example the stairs is connected to this wall right here very flush that means that on this side probably i want a similar structure that has to connect to this side of of the floors so let me turn off my layers for a moment here so let's assume that i had a wall there for a moment so i'm going to select this edge uh select these two edges and shift duplicate that and i'm going to separate the selection p and then select that edge select it all and then i'm going to create a wall simply by extruding that all the way up here like that so now i have something that uh this uh metal uh l bracket skin snap onto in one form of the other so now i can give this wall some type of thickness uh so i can tell it to be also solidified 20 centimeters if that's my thickness okay everything is looking good apply scale okay okay so now that that's done i have to reset my 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 pathway because you know the remaining space that is left is not four feet anymore so all i have to do now is that I'm going to select all of this and move it here and then I'm going to extrude because I want to uh, remember you know the path that is accessible that is not sort of blocked by any wall this is why I have to always keep on updating that and if I bring back my slab alt H tab out of this and alt H uh let me hide this so if i bring back my slab uh, uh where are we so let me drop uh so that means that now if i you know i have a support structure uh, for this slab that this wall can be if this is a closed wall for as an example and what i can now do is that i can duplicate this and move the copy of this wall over here like this uh, probably bring this down by one meter tall like this and this can start to serve as my railing uh, of some sort and now i can select this path and simply copy that and move it up by three meters like this and sometimes I like to give it a gentle solidify modifier just so it pokes out a little bit out of the ground like maybe two uh, two centimeters and then I flip the direction or I just come here and offset it this way okay so we can see that nice and clear and so uh, solidify and do that so we can see that nice and clear so let me turn off the mad cap it's pretty sad that we cannot uh, have different colors all the time the way we wish with the mad cap but anyways um, clearly here I want to edit this whole uh, you know so I'm going to select this entire loop uh, like this and like this and I'm going to snap it here instead right there okay so everything looks good now so turn off the mad cap uh, turn that off and so I, I usually tend to put some colors to the path 
so that corridor path uh, they will always help me define my path like this and this is very good for also like things like uh, right, you know um, ergonomic studies and and things like that you know uh, like this you know where you're trying to study restaurant settings and sitting positions and chairs and and you need certain uh, spacings between people and eating and seating all that stuff you know so it's extremely good for ergonomic studies when you can just have volumes that you can snap to and understand uh, the way that your path uh, sort of uh, is all about um, so what else can I say about this uh, instead of making this tutorial long um, okay I think that's about it for now uh, so I just wanted to make sure that I speak about corridors because at this point now that I have this corridor for example I could say okay you know I want this there to sort of uh, this door to sort of be you know dead center with this corridor right here and I want to move this door opening like this um, you know I don't like where it is right now uh, it's not in a good position so I can move that like that so now I don't have my my door literally lending into this entrance of the stair and I have this sort of gentle pocket here you know and at this point I can say well you know I probably want a window here you know uh, a window right here so I'm gonna drop two edge loops just two and you know probably do something like this where this you know maybe I want this edge loop to be about the height of my of my of my door um, so maybe uh, I'm going to ta -ta -ta, maybe I'm going to dissolve these edge loops dissolve edge our vertices nope edge and so now I have this entire window that I can simply the, you know just X faces like this and since I've already created a, a uh, you know a window before uh, where are we here are some examples of the windows that we've made earlier so I just copy this like this and bring that right here move that to this layer uh, and all I have to do now is just snap that here move that down here select this face bring that here select this face bring that here and select that face bring it here do the same with this one edge corridor um, edge like this internal edge and I didn't even apply the scale so that might change apply scale okay so that's good so my window feels a little bit thick from the inside sort of like this you know spoken out too much so I want to move it out a little bit sort of like this so now I have a window and I have a door so you know and I can uh, just uh, bring my guy here and put him at the entrance there for pre-visualization so that's kind of um, you know the way that uh, you can see how modeling can quickly become intuitive when you sort of have a few 
sort of information figured out uh, the rest can be extremely intuitive so I'm not gonna make this tutorial very lengthy I'm just gonna stop right here uh, because this was just a parenthesis that I wanted to make sure I spoke about so uh, I give I hope this gives you a good idea on how to maintain some proper spacing until then see you into the next tutorial